friends we're back here on the other side of the sawmill building and I have logs scattered everywhere pretty much let me show you guys what I uncovered today so I was working through my pile and I found something that, to be honest with you I forgot I had and that's this log right here that is a polonia log and that's a very interesting tree we'll talk more about it once we're getting on the sawmill but I tell you guys Honestly, I forgot I had this tree. I kind of remember getting it in here about two years ago, but I forgot where it was back here amongst the high grass. In case you're wondering, I'm starting to go through this pile back here and saw up everything we got. I got another root beer log right there, that sassafras if you're new to this channel. This will be a nice one. I forgot about it as well. It's a black walnut crotch log. It has a crotch right there and another one at the bottom. That'd be a very nice log right there. And toward the top over there is a lot of hickory that's probably been out here too long. I'll probably turn that into firewood and some poplar and some white pine. So let's go get on the 754 and bring that polonia over to the mill. I'm excited guys. I have never sawed up a polonia tree. I'll tell you what, it is a hot day here in Tennessee. It's even hotter inside this tractor right here. Now I mentioned how hot it is in here. Better get this air conditioner going. All right guys, check this out. I've been meaning to show you guys this. This is a pretty cool feature on this tractor. It's got a self-leveling bucket. So as you raise up the front end loader right there, the bucket will stay level without having to do anything. It's a pretty nice feature, especially if you're doing work with uh, with a bucket on there, moving dirt or gravel around. See right there, I've got the grapple open. Stays in that same position the whole time that I raise up the loader. Pretty neat feature right there. I'll be really glad when I get all these logs back here, either split in the firewood or sawed up. Getting kind of tight back here to bring logs to the mill, especially for the 754. Now, I gotta get these logs out of the way, guys. I'll tell you, there ain't room to do nothing up here. In this tractor. Takes up a lot of room. There we go. That's what we've been looking for. Then one thing, it's heavy. All right. Now, see if I can glide it in. Get it to roll over. Hey. Well, not too bad. It's close enough. I need to get me a bigger building, guys. I'll tell you what. I cannot see anything when I start loading logs in there. Let's see if we can roll it on there. Yep, it's heavy. There we go. All right, guys, down here, there's a little bit, just a little bit of wind shape down here. Not too bad, though. Seen a lot worse. Diameter is 27 inches. Up here on the other end, we got a crotch. We'll measure that once we get on the sawmill. It's kind of hard to tell. This log right here, friends, has a lot of potential. Let's warm up the mill for just a minute. Load up this log.
All right, friends, a real big shout out to my friend Ralph up in Michigan, a longtime supporter of the channel. He sent me this hat the other day. I kind of like it. I like that straw hat, but this one right here, I think I liked it a little bit better. Looks pretty good on me, don't it? What do you guys think? There's a few of you that probably don't like it. I'm sure you'll comment down below. I liked it, so uh, that's that. On the sawmill, this is Polonia, and this is something, friends, that you probably won't see on a sawmill, maybe ever. I talked to a few sawyers on the phone today down in Georgia and in Alabama, and those guys have never sawed into anything like this or never even heard of it, to be honest with you. So let's get educated here just a little bit about this tree before we open it up. I had to research today. I didn't know this stuff. This is Polonia. It's also known as the princess tree. That's kind of unique right there. It's kind of has a good rot resistance. It's not as good as white oak or sassafras or something like that, but it does have a decent rot resistance to it. Furniture makers like this stuff for tables and for cabinet work. It has a very unique grain. By the pictures I was looking at, it really favors American chestnut. Common uses also are carving, musical instruments, electric guitar bodies, etc. So the Japanese like this tree, the Chinese like this tree. It was brought over to North America around 1830. And I think there was a lot of it brought over around 1980. And it was really planted pretty heavily in the States based on what I was reading on it this morning. And it looks like a lot of people have kind of deemed this stuff as an invasive species. They don't like it. And most of it was gotten rid of and taken to the landfill about 10 years ago. I think Nashville, Tennessee, got a whole lot of these planted during the 80s and people came in and didn't like them and the foresters recommended getting rid of them. That's based on what I'm reading right here and I think that's probably right based on the source. Now we have a crotch on this side right here and the width on it measures 34 inches. I'm not after crotch figure on this log. I don't think it's really gonna be valuable like walnut would be. So I'm gonna come in here first and put it up on its sides and get rid of these branches right here and narrow this down but I am going to saw parallel to this crotch area and see what it looks like. Cause you never know, we may open this up and it may look fantastic. A real big thank you to everybody on Patreon for supporting me here on the channel. If you guys are interested in supporting me through Patreon, there's a link down below. I really appreciate that guys. It helps us out here in the channel a whole lot, a whole lot more than you guys know. So let's get going guys and see what's inside this one.
right, friends, I got some more information about this species. I posted a picture over on Patreon. That's another incentive right there for you guys to join me over there. It's only a dollar a month or five dollars a month, whatever you want to choose over there. But I posted a picture of this and Jay, one of my longtime members over there, told me this is a fine grain and warp resistant hardwood. It's also fast growing. It's used for uh, chest, boxes, etc. The word, the word, my goodness, Nathan, come on now. The wood is also burned to make charcoal for sketching and powder for fireworks. The bark is also made into dye. Well, thank you very much, Jay. We all learned some more about this species just then. And they're heavy. Huh. It's pretty unique right there. There is some crotch figure right there. I spoke too soon. Tell you what guys, one of the best things about this 70 is this table on the end. That looks pretty nice right there. There's a lot of washboard going on, but I was varying my speed a little bit right there. I wasn't sure how fast to saw. So we do have some washboarding on the face of this slab. That's okay, no big deal. All right, friends, here is everybody's favorite part of the video. Christmas in, what month is it? It's June, Christmas in June. I tell you what, friends, the water always makes everything look so much better. And if you're new to this channel, it does not hurt the wood. I had to stop for about an hour and wrangle those chickens back into the chicken house. This is my first time having chickens and you guys didn't warn me about how stupid they are. <laughs> I tell you what, they won't listen to nothing. I tried to get them to go back to the chicken house and they just ran from me. I don't know what their problem is. So guys, we got two slabs cut on this log and I think I'm gonna call it a night cause it's already eight o'clock. I gotta take the trash down clean all this mess up and then go in the house and spend about three hours editing this video. We'll come out here tomorrow and finish up this log. We're also going to install some electric fencing around the chicken run. And I may burn the brush pile tomorrow. That's gonna to break some people's hearts right there. You guys hate when I do that. It's a necessary evil though. Gotta get rid of that stuff. And I think that's all I got to do tomorrow. And I may try to put the land plane on the 754 if it don't rain. We're supposed to get some rain tomorrow and we need some rain. It's been pretty dry actually. Mm -hmm. 